All right, guys, we're live with common mistakes with the kettlebell swing. Listen, I'm a huge fan of kettlebells in general, but I will tell you this, um, it's not about the kettlebell, it's actually how you use it, okay? So there are some prerequisites to swinging a kettlebell, okay? It's very, very important that you understand that. Um, and as a coach, I need to make sure that my clients know and that I have a good reason for actually prescribing the kettlebell swing. Um, Fantastic exercise when done right, and again, it could be really, really bad when done incorrectly. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is, uh, one of the mistakes is honestly just overall poor movement quality. If, uh, you, know, if you, you don't have the ability to just create some stiffness in your abdominals and lock your pelvis and lumbar spine down, you have no business uh, trying to swing a kettlebell in a ballistic fashion, okay? So that's the first thing, is if you just can't lock down your lumbar spine, um, and your pelvis and, and maintain positioning, then you should be swinging a belt. Um, you have to have decent enough uh, hip mobility uh, to do it correctly. And uh, a huge part of it is just, you know, getting evaluated, right? If you're going to swing a kettlebell, find a coach that can run you through uh, some sort of screen. I'm a huge fan of the FMS, I would recommend that. Um, and, and make sure that you have the prerequisite mobility, motor control, all that stuff to do it. And if you, if you can indeed uh, get into positions and have overall good movement quality, awesome, then you know, move forward. So uh, first thing we're gonna talk about is um, you know, developing slow strength. Now, a kettlebell swing is essentially a, an explosive deadlift, okay? But in order, to, in order to swing a kettlebell correctly, we need to develop slow strength. So, for getting into a kettlebell swing, it's an athletic-based movement, okay? Um, when you swing a bell, you should, you should look athletic when you do it. You shouldn't look robotic, okay? It should be fluid. Now, the big thing that we wanna focus on here is positioning, and we're just gonna talk about the kettlebell deadlift. Look, if this is your kettlebell deadlift, if this is your posture on the deadlift, this is the bottom of your swing. This is why it's so important to understand the deadlift. Look. Deadlift posture, bottom of my swing. Okay, very, very important to understand. They should look identical. Again, from the front, look. Here's your deadlift posture. Here's the bottom of your swing. So the positioning and the angle of your tibia and your femur and everything else should be identical. Okay, that's why it's very, very important to understand that. So the deadlift is a fantastic way to just get into position. Um, once we get into that position, obviously we're gonna do a deadlift, but the top position of the deadlift is very important as well because the top position of a deadlift is essentially a plank. So when we finish our deadlift or our swing, we should be nice and tall, our pelvis is level, our, our feet are rooted into the ground, our butt tight, our belly's tight, and our neck is neutral, okay? So as we come on up, and I'm gonna obviously be looking at the camera, as we come on up, we get set up, boom, we get tight, boom, we squish our butt, squish our belly, and go from there. One of the big mistakes I see, even on the deadlift, is that we try to finish our hips, and at the top of the deadlift, we, we're trying to use so much tension, right? We do this, and we put our neck into flexion, and we kind of curl up a little bit. Um, easiest way to think of it is if you're, uh, if you're 5'10", you should be 5'10 at the top of your deadlift and at the top of your kettlebell swing, okay? So you shouldn't get shorter at the top of your swing. So it's very, very important that you dial in your slow strength, dial in your kettlebell deadlift, and then from there, um, you know, you can start to, to work on the swing. So getting right into the swing now, uh, the biggest issue that I see is timing. Um, everybody wants to do this big, crazy, explosive hit movement, but their timing is off. So quickly, I'm gonna talk about the timing of the swing and, and why the timing is very, very important. And then I'm gonna show you a drill to, uh, to help focus on that timing. So, when done correctly, the hips drive the movement, but the arms guide. So at the bottom of the kettlebell swing, the elbows are connected to the rib cage. Okay, elbows are connected. As we come down and we load up, we're loading up that posterior chain, but the elbows are still nice and tight, kettlebells underneath. Once we finish our hips, once we finish here, pop, we pop our hips and the arms blast off of the rib cage. And then we let the kettlebell come out. It's gonna float for a second. And then as our elbows reconnect, 
we go back into our hinge, okay? So it's like this pop, this would be like a one-arm swing just so I can show you. But that is our trigger. Okay, don't be in a rush to, to finish those hips and don't be in a rush to get that bell up because this is what's gonna happen is people use their arms and they yank with their arms and they go to swing and then the kettlebell's already here. Kettlebell's already out in front of them and then they try to snap their hips and then they get this kind of double movement happening. So if you really want it to translate to a powerful swing, we need to get the timing down. A lot of my clients, I'll actually help them with their cadence. I'll tell them, hinge, stand, hinge, stand, hinge, stand. Whatever works, but the timing is very, very important. So look, we do a baby swing. I teach this in my, uh, in my workshops. We just work on timing. So watch what we're gonna do. It's just the baby swing. We're gonna hinge, stand, hinge, stand, hinge, stand, hinge, stand. Hinge, stand, hinge, stand, hinge, stand, hinge, stand. So eventually what will end up happening is that if you, if you get everything dialed in, you're gonna finish those hips and it's gonna float off. And then again, elbows connect to the rib cage and you go right back into your hinge. So it's very important to get that. Now, when we're doing that, you have to be patient, okay? So at the top of the swing, you're gonna let that kettlebell float. So we're gonna pop our hips and it's gonna float. At that point, that is, that's your point to relax a little bit, right? So we're gonna let that float. You don't have to give it the death grip, okay? You don't have to be like top of the swing and you're locking it down. You're gonna snap your hips, you're gonna finish, boom, and you're just gonna let it float. Very, very important because as you start doing a ton of swings, that float is actually gonna be a little bit of a rest period. And also, when you're swinging a kettlebell, and this is, this is hard style, it is really, a nice balance of tension and relaxation if you're doing it right. So we want to enjoy that float at the top, and then same thing on the way down. Be patient, be patient, be patient, boom, elbows hit the ribs, boom, and then we get back into our hinge and our swing. Okay, so very important that you understand that. So timing is a biggie. If you want to check out one of my old blogs, it's actually called Newton's Cradle and the Kettlebell Swing. And it's just a blog really going into uh, sort of the physics behind the swing a little bit. Uh, another mistake people make is with their, uh, with their neck position. Um, I see a lot of this. They swing up, okay, and at the very bottom of their swing, they're in, they're in the extension and they're, they're sticking their chin up, and they're really here, and at the top, they tuck. All right, so we get this huge kind of gross flexion and extension thing going on in the swing. So you're, you know, you're here, you go into too much cervical extension, and at the very top, you tuck your chin. And the problem with that is, if you're doing 200 swings, you're doing 200 of these. Very fast and very ballistic. So, um, listen, yeah, there's nothing wrong with strengthening your neck, but you know, if you're doing a whole bunch of those and you're wondering why your neck's bothering you, hey, listen, you should probably pay attention to how many times you're jamming your neck into extension and then obviously jamming it down into flexion. So, uh, easiest thing to do is just find, find a point on the wall, have a little bit, of a little tiny bit of cervical extension, and as we stand up, it's just gonna keep you neutral at the top, okay? So just pay attention to your neck position. There are other conversations about neck packing, yada, 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 good stuff, really good stuff, but for now, to make it really, really simple, just keep it neutral, maybe a little bit of extension at the top position. So that's a biggie. Um, talking about tension, you don't need to use too much tension. Um, that's a biggie, okay? The tension should be, uh, uh, dialed up or dialed down depending on uh, what you're trying to get out of the swing. If you're swinging a beast, you're gonna have to use a lot of tension. If you're swinging an 18 pounder, you're not gonna have to use as much. So actually using the appropriate amount of tension um, is, is really important because you wanna do enough to get the job done but don't overdo it. That's a biggie, okay? So make sure that you're using the uh, appropriate amount of tension. And honestly, uh, the last thing that we'll talk about is how, how you program your kettlebell swings. Um, if you're just if you're just learning how to, to do a kettlebell swing, um, honestly, sets of five, sets of eight, maybe sets of ten, with appropriate rest. Okay, that's going to allow you to um, develop your skill, still get somewhat of a training effect, but also you're not going to overdo it. Think about it. If I said to you, "Hey, um, we're going to work on swings today. You, you've done a few sets of swings, and I'm going to have you do 50 swings." Five sets of 10, it's gonna look very different than one set of 50. Now, 
if you are, are a highly level conditioned athlete and you have some sort of reason to do high rep kettlebell work, cool, that's a different conversation, okay? But for, for the beginners and for newbies, honestly, keep the reps around 10 or less. Um, you can still get a lot of mileage and a lot of benefit um, uh, of the kettlebell swing just by doing lower reps, okay? Say if you do, I don't know, get to the point where you're doing on the minute work. So every minute you're doing X amount of swings. Well, guess what? If you start off and you do five swings uh, every minute for 10 minutes, that's 50 awesome swings, okay? It's a great way to you know drive heart rate, get your practice in, but not overdo it. So that's really a biggie. Really simple stuff, guys, but th the best thing you can do, honestly, is just find a really good instructor. Uh, go to strongfirst.com. There's some really, really good instructors that can teach you the basics. And uh, if you really wanna dive in and, and learn, you know, come up and visit us at uh, SOS and, and Chum from Massachusetts and uh, say hello. So again, pay attention to those things, guys. Make sure that you move well. Make sure that you have the appropriate slow strength. Nail that deadlift, nail that deadlift. Make sure that your positioning is good. You know, all of your, your joint angles are there. Your neck position is good. And uh, don't use too much tension. And just, again, when you're programming, be smart and uh, don't overdo it. We'll see you next week.